Um, Python hardware time. All right, the big news is every single year we do CircuitPython Day. So CircuitPython Day is this month, August 18th, 2023. It's a Friday. We have a full day of programming and more. Um, we'll get the word out for folks to participate. You'll be able to pop into our shows. It'll just be a full day celebrating all things CircuitPython, Python on hardware. Join us. Um, our newsletter went out this week, Lady Ada. Yeah. Um, and the newsletter has a bunch of projects. It's conference season. I'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, CircuitPython 8.2.1 was released. Um, anything super big with this one? A bit, like, so it's a release and there's a lot of bug fixes and a couple of, a lot of boards got released. But the really interesting thing is that we are uh, getting started on what's going to be in Python 9. Um, yeah. and USB host is one of the things that, you know, it's not a secret. You see Scott working on it. Yeah. Um, USB host is going to be in there. Um, so it'll be kind of neat. Cool. Um, we did a recap of the circuit Python hack chat. Also Hackaday did a recap on their site. You can read that as well. Um, we'll talk about some, uh, whippersnapper stuff soon. Circuit Python day, MicroPython added Laura support. Um, Tom's hardware interviews, edu block founder, Josh Lowe. You can see a lot of cool circuit Python stuff in that interview. Um, tons of Python resources, but the thing I wanted to ask you this week, Lady Ada, because it is DEF CON season, it is badge season, we just saw badges on yeah. show and tell, is um, why in the world would someone ever choose Python over other ways to do embedded development for conference badges? And the reason I ask is today there was a blog post because there is a board hack 2023 NFC badges. And I did get a chance to talk to the uh, developer of this over email, and they said some really nice words. But I thought, huh, this would be a good time to ask Lady Ada, like, when people are thinking about making a badge, why would they choose something like MicroPython or CircuitPython versus other ways? Okay. Not saying anything's better. There's just different different strokes, different folks. But why? What would be the benefits of choosing a scripting language like Python for a conference badge? Well, one thing about conference badges is they're never done on time. <laughs> they're always they're always rushed, which is you know totally that, normal. They're fun. they're a project they use them for fun with friends, and you're usually kind of rushing around to get you know ten to a couple hundred badges done before an event. Um, and so speed of development is the most important. And what isn't important is um not the security is in like obviously it's a def con and people want to hack on stuff but it's not like you have to like keep all your code um super private and you know compiled and um it's not like you have to make it difficult for people to work on you want to make it really easy for people to work on so one of the things about using embedded languages is and you know i've covered this every time we do talks on micropython circuit python is the speed of iteration especially for these big chips like the RP2040, big flash memories and the ESP32, which has like a very intense compilation process. It's every time you want to do something, you're like compiling and updating, compiling, updating, and it's and it's minutes. Like, and I, and I do it all the time. I'm, even with like platform IO, you're kind of like waiting around a little bit. With embedded Python, that speed is like, it's so instant. Like you can try things and you're just like so, so fast, it's like seconds, like less than seconds. Um, especially with CircuitPython, where on save it restarts. And so if you're doing development on drivers or on LED animations or anything where you're like, look, I, it doesn't have to be like perfect polish. It just has to work good enough for me to go to this event. And the second big thing is the ease for which you can get other people involved. You know, it definitely always you, you have usually your booth booth and you have <laughs> <laughs> we were we were playing a word game. How many things have the word booth in it? And I did phone booth, voting booth, and then we did trade booth, and then there was listening booth. Anyways, we played word games. He was very good at the the booth one. I was not really on top of that one. He he would definitely won. He definitely won that version of the game. Um, at your booth, you're giving away the badges. Everyone's wearing them. And people want to hang out. And they're like hanging out with their laptops and they're like, oh, I want to change the animations or I want to change the message or I want to hack on it. I want to reverse engineer, debug something. And especially this is like an NFC chip over here. And you're like, you know, you want to read NFC tags and maybe emulate them. And 
you know, I love, I love embedded development, but it's definitely like now you're installing another version of Python. Now you have a new IDE. Oh, you've got the long version of ARM GCC. And then like six hours later, maybe you can compile and upload. And now you need drivers and somebody's on a Mac and it's like x86 and it's the M2 and they don't, it's not the, you know, they don't have it, it's not signed. None of that matters when you're dealing with embedded languages. You plug it in, it shows up as a disk drive or you're using Thonny or you're using, you know, VS code or whatever, and you can instantly start coding. The code is visible there. It's another thing people are like, what's, what code is on here? I don't even know. How do I edit it? Because you have to like, just get back to what the default code is before you can even start modifying it. But if it's an embedded interpreted language, it, the interpreted language script is right there and you can immediately work on it. You know, I've done workshops where it's like 45 minutes just to get people to install the right drivers, to install the IDE, to like plug in whatever, that's all gone with um embedded uh interpretive languages especially important at a place where like people are drunk they're coming and going they're going to a talk they come back they're like shit where was i wait you know we're you know setting this on fire we're like pushing shipley into the fountain at the alexis park uh you don't have time to install an ide you want to get onto it so that's why i think okay circuit my, python's my, great my little uh odds and ends to add to what you said is um, they show up as USB drives if you use something like CircuitPython, so that's super easy. A lot of people have laptops. Um, the other thing is interpreted languages are great for uh, strings, so like oh, yeah. internet stuff, and that's where everything nice that's where everything is heading. Um, oh, like you know, you reverse and drink something, you want to get the strength and the data. You want to parse yeah. out bits and bytes and and then shift things around. A lot of these things, if they're not maintainable when you get home you just toss it or just sits on a shelf forever um, the way we set up uh circuit python for example when you go to circuitpython.org downloads there's always a new firmware for whatever you have too so you can use this badge and we know people have used uh badges with circuit python for years for other projects so the developer of this particular one i said hey can i share this and Thomas said, yes, thank you. I really like CircuitPython for stuff like this. The low barrier of entry with the decisions of mass storage and auto reload on save, I find it great, especially for people who aren't programmers or electronic engineers. Wow. Yeah. That's so, the point. <laughs> so yeah, and you know, we were That's on, great. yeah. And like, you know, good news, bad news. We were on Hackaday recently and there was some crummy comments. Uh, there's purists that say, you should never have a scripting language on a microcontroller. But there were some people that had some insightful comments and they said, look, expert gatekeeper jerk i'm paraphrasing um some people want to get started and yeah they can get to that but they got to start somewhere so don't be a jerk everyone was beginner once in their life um not everyone is um you know god yet so this is a great way to get started and you can always add more complexity and skills but if you want to get started especially when people haven't been doing embedded development for 60 years or 50 years or whatever um this is a way to get there and i guess the only thing i'd say is i think you get a more diverse interesting group of people when you allow beginners in and you have beginners and something for them than if it's just like you're the expert that worked on as 400 and there's like four of you left on planet earth like i think you want to meet new people too so anyways that's python on hardware. that's python on hardware you can get all this exciting news and more ada for daily delivered every single week Okie dokie, let's keep going.